are going to talk about the latest articles, um, tutorials posted in uh, last month in the PHP Classic site regarding PHP and other related topics on the PHP Classic blog. Uh, there are quite a few, I think seven last month. Uh, and the first one is about the best way to find a, a job in 2016. So let me share the screen. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, I think you are seeing it, right? So this, yep. this article is actually uh, uh, to, to let people know that um, uh, nowadays, the demand for uh, developers in general is so high that uh, companies are chasing developers, not developers chasing jobs. So as long as you are qualified, you could, for instance, submit your resumes to a site like Hired and they will contact you if you match the profile the companies are looking for. So that is basically uh, uh, the, the way they are saying uh, if they have uh, the process working. So they, are, they have been in touch and I have written and posted this article here. And, uh, uh, and they have uh, a team that sorts, uh, is sort of dedicated talent advocates, basically they find people that are skilled and they actually put them in companies that uh, are usually very high profile and you get great jobs in many countries, not just the United States, uh, other countries where they work, like uh, several countries in Europe, Australia and uh, others. So that was an, one of the articles of that month. It was not specific to PHP, so it could be interesting to uh, developers of other, uh, other uh, I would say, languages or maybe a profile in different languages. So the next topic I want to talk about is an article uh, that is related with creating a software product business. So as you may be aware, I've been publishing some videos regarding uh, helping developers to create their own software product business. And the, the, I have published already like 12, I think, and uh, this one is specifically about one concern that many developers have, which is, oh, it's okay, uh, it's nice to have their own business, their own company, but I just want to continue to be a developer, I just want to write code. And that is not only possible, that is also recommended. You don't have to create a company alone, just by yourself. You can, but uh, sometimes it's even harder. And you can associate with a partner uh, that uh, is skilled on complementary areas like marketing, sales, or some other areas. So you can continue to be a developer. And basically, this is a, a, a this uh, article, which is actually a, a video uh, and that, that, that tells you that you don't have to stop uh, uh, being a developer. And that's what many developers want. Artists, what what, uh, what do you think? Is this feasible? Yeah. You, you have gone through uh, an experience to create your own company. Uh, yep. You are a developer. Do you prefer to prefer to write? Most of them probably fail because, yeah, mostly a developer, not a sales person or not a marketing person, not even business yeah. person. So in my case, I would really need a, a, a co-founder with complementary skills who would take on yeah. the other part that I am not willing to do or not willing to do good enough. So did you associate with a partner with complementary business skills or did you also associate with a developer? No, uh, my first thing that I noticed is that I have 
lack of design skills. So my first co-founder in many of the projects started was a designer. But we, we both like more, more business and sales skills, so. <laughs> uh, okay, that, that, is, that is also good. It doesn't hurt to have skills in different areas, but typically one person is better on, on one thing in particular, not in yeah. everything. So, okay, okay, the next uh, topic is about a video. Do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, oh, let me show the screen, I almost forgot. Um, it helps. I think it's this one, right? Uh, let's, uh, I'm, I'm, let me sort the windows here. Because uh, I want to. Okay. So, uh, yes, exactly. Let's do one. Yeah. So. It's an article about my SQL index optimization tricks written by a very good developer with 50 <laughs> years experience. Okay, 15, not 50, but also good enough. Uh, and actually, I, I, I've watched the video, and um, apart from some life examples, how to log, log queries and how to do explain queries, it also applies, your suggestions could also apply to for example, MongoDB too, because in MongoDB, I think indexes are even more resource yes. eating, space eating, storage eating, basically. So yes, you, need to, you, you don't want to put index on every field that you perform query on. You just want to put indexes on the slow queries or with a lot of uh, records and stuff like that. So this is the same logic applies to uh, probably to yeah. many databases. Yes, uh, in yeah, reality, uh, an index is also like a, a separate table or separate uh, yeah. set of records. So, if you put indexes in all fields, you end up with uh, uh, an index <laughs> that takes more more space that, uh, than the than the, the actual table. And um, but there are uh, uh, other aspects. Uh, for instance, one that is. If you have enough experience, you already know that if you put many indexes uh, uh, in certain updated records, also become slow. So it may not be a good idea. And this is uh, the first part of an article, you, you can, uh, which is actually a tutorial video. I'll make a presentation, and the next, and the second, second part, I'll tell you alternatives to when using indexes is not a good idea. You, you can use things like. Uh, queues, like uh, using a table to queue records to be inserted in a bigger table that is so large that yeah. and has indexes that, uh, that uh, it probably will halt <laughs> your application. And um, mm, I, I, I remember an example in case of PHP classes and JS classes, there, there is a, a single table that records all the packages that each all developers have downloaded, so there's millions of records. And uh, there was a point that updating that table was becoming so slow that I had to do that, like creating a queue table. But uh, anyway, this is a tutorial video, and this is the first part. The second part has those techniques. There are several techniques. So, uh, if you have not seen it, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but it is good. Is about uh, some non obvious techniques that not every developer knows, but it's useful to know when you have performance problems in databases. Okay, so I was trying to find here the next topic is improving. Uh, okay. You can also comment on this, improving the protection of yeah. PHP okay, oh. sure. So again, that's a topic by this one real experienced developer. <laughs> <laughs> who also developed the OAuth class, PHP class, that you can find on the PHP classes blog. And just to make sure the all PHP class is completely secure and everything is okay. An article is not about the security of it, but as with every authentication, we need to 
provide something that uh, would help system identify us like a password and this is usually the most uh, unsecure thing and place and uh, from this article it explains that an allowed uh, second version uh, as a password the, uh, it's uh, is used the where did I read? Yeah, so there is a client ID and the secret key. Uh, so usually you create like an application, register an application uh, in the system, and then you have the secret key for this application, which you provide through to our server, uh, which would then authenticate you and provide you a token that you could use for API requests. And uh, basically, having yeah those um, client ID and secret key exposed would really harm. Uh, the application, uh, the user, yeah. too. So imagine if if someone could use Facebook app as you only by knowing this value. So if you ex if application expose them somehow, um, thank God they are application specific. So only for this application they could appear like you for Facebook. Could completely ruin, ruin your social life. Yeah, it's not just that. Uh, uh, yeah. It's I think uh, Facebook requires that, but I don't know other APIs. If you want to create a, a Facebook API, uh, application, you need to to use your own Facebook account. It must be the personal account, yeah. not an account of your company. So if for some reason uh, somebody enters in your Facebook account, it, it you can access the Facebook uh, application credentials. Although nowadays uh, Facebook has protected it better by requiring you to enter your account password uh, to see the credential, uh, see the client secret of your applications that you have yeah. created in Facebook. And anyway, I just written this article because I discovered this site, this have I been pwned, uh, which I realized that not only me was not aware of this site, the problem is not the site, the problem is that they found it lets you know exactly, if you can show it, it's better. Yeah. Yeah, so, so if you put your email there, uh, it will tell you if you were at an account that was uh, at, uh, at was breached. Oh, yeah. It even shows where. So in 2013, exactly. there was an Adobe account, Quicksense, LinkedIn, MySpace. Great. Yeah. Well, I changed my password like every year. I actually didn't but, know I'm still on but, MySpace. <laughs> well, I appeared to have like an account in Badu. I did not even know what was Badu. Then I'll, I'll, I'll realize it was a, like a dating site. And I, I, I was told they automatically create accounts if somebody uh, asks to add you because you use your friend and it has your email address. Uh -huh. They yeah. create accounts automatically for that person. But I never but they don't have your password. Uh, so then they don't have your password. Exactly because I never <laughs> I never went there to actually complete the creation of the account. Uh, anyway, uh, there is one there. What is this click sense? You should know because you created yeah the and that was some the pay to quick site used for advertising or something like that. Yeah, and it, this is a recent breach, like September 2016. So go there, run, go change your password there. <laughs> and uh, what is. Well, I think that they breached it in this year, but I haven't used it, I don't know, for like maybe five years, if, if, if not more. So the, the password is old. Yes, but uh, no anyway, anyway, there are two concerns. One is that if, if for some reason you use the same password in that site and other sites, maybe somebody can try it in other sites. Yeah. And another one is, well, it depends on what uh, you did on that site. If you did uh, something uh, 
that uh, would be security sensitive, like uh, for instance, let's say you provided your credit card there. By now, your credit that's card why, would be stable. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I only use PayPal and, and pay everything. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say that because it's it's a good thing that because it's a good thing. Uh, well. I know PayPal charges large fees these days, but it also inspires trust to the to users because they know that uh, your the sites that charge PayPal will not have your credit card. And, uh, yeah. But there, there was a rumor I heard. Actually, I read. read I think it was in TechCrunch. They 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 mentioned that uh, Spotify. Which is really really popular, add a bridge, at least in a few accounts. And uh, um, if there was a bridge, they keep your credit card there, so they could um, charge you for your subscription. And uh, what's even uh, more complicated is somebody said, "Oh, I'm going to cancel my account there." I suspect that cancelling their account will not avoid them getting your credit card. Although yeah, if they already they get, say, got the data. No, it's not just that, because when you cancel, in reality, no data is deleted. It's just like a soft delete. And most sites do that. And sometimes uh, uh, I receive a request, I want to delete my account because I heard there were some leaks in sites and this and that. The users think that uh, when that, that function that says delete account in certain sites really deletes the information, and it doesn't. And you can you can the, um, uh, have, be sure about that. If you delete your account and try to create the same account with the same credentials, if it doesn't let you, it is because it, the information is still, still there. It is. But people say, but there is a law in the European Union that requires you to delete the information of the accounts. You know, sometimes there are laws that are not feasible because deleting accounts does not mean deleting information. And if, even if the information was actually deleted from the database in a way that could not be recovered, there would be probably backups, there would be log files and from the past that had your information there. So, there is no really uh, and anything 100% secure or private for the matter. And I know there are those laws in the European Union, but sometimes there are laws that cannot be enforced. How do, how do we go to a site that says, I have a delete button, and make sure that the site has actually deleted the information? You can. Anyway. Uh, we are talking about PHP articles here, and the next article is about, again, about business. And this one is about... Uh, 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 there is there's a, a user that asks, uh, I want about to create a software product, but how do I attract users to try it for the first time, at least for the first time? So, basically, we want to know about how to do marketing, how to start attracting customer or leads uh, or prospects. And uh, there was uh, this uh, free consulting session that was recorded on video with this developer. And then uh, I answered the question to him. I gave him some tips like using some content marketing, like creating some interesting content uh, for people that are your target market uh, and uh, like uh, uh, sometimes offering ebooks if people sign up to get more information uh, so people put their email address and get more information so uh, this is interesting and, uh, and simple way to get you started because doing marketing can be many things and really complex, but he wants to to know how to get users to try software for the first time. 
And there, there is another article uh, about um, how to choose the best market to sell our software product. In reality, this is yet another video on which I tell about uh, something that may be disappointing. For instance, if you are creating uh, products that are for software developers, that is probably not your best market because many software developers avoid buying software because they probably know there is a free alternative, a free open source solution or is there is uh, or maybe the developer can develop the solution and use it for free and uh, this is just to say that the creating products for software developers is not a bad idea but maybe harder to succeed it's not impossible but it's harder to succeed so the, the, this video is just to tell about that Okay, so the next topic is about one uh, article on uh, that, right? Yeah. Let me share it. Uh, so, what is uh, a tax, at the tax, and um, it's simple unless you're selling something and selling something in European Union because in European Union I remember all the chaos when the law was applied and every startup in here in Latvia was frustrated that when you're selling something in European Union they don't have to pay the, the tax uh, tax rate of your country but rather of the countries they live in so you have you need to have all up-to-date information for all the the tax rates in all the European Union countries and of course as a reaction to this there's there was many products started which provided it as a service and I think Dave Smith is um, uh, also ex uh, basically um, describing one of the services right so it's not the okay. it's not the, the usual API layer yeah, yes, it's yeah, one. Uh, yeah. they, they have many APIs and they develop classes to wrap around the APIs. And that is one. Yes, so uh, it's, uh, I think it not only provides the rates, it, 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 see, it, talk, it also can validate what numbers uh, and, and calculate the, the end prices and stuff like that. So it could be really useful if you're generating invoices for your customers and if they live in specific countries so it would also take into account that information yeah because well yeah because well it might not be uh, so complicated for us for example but uh, knowing all up to date rates in all the european union could be complicated yes i think it depends on the type of product that they are selling and uh, I guess in the United States they, they don't have VAT but they have taxes that are specific to each state so it's probably the same thing I, what I think is what may be different is that the, the, um, the taxes depend on the type of product or service and that is a uh, complicated hell because it is changing, like each, each government changes its taxes according to the needs to collect more taxes or not. And, uh, well, I think that service is very useful for that purpose. Yeah. At least uh, the, the name of the taxes is the same in the, all European Union countries. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's useful for that. I don't know. I think it also provides historical data, like what it, what was the VAT tax back then in the past, in certain date for a certain type of product. I'm not sure if it does that, but it is interesting. I don't see anything mentioned of the historical values. Yeah, no. I, maybe I'm confusing with the, the currency layer 
AP. I mean, they, they have historical files. Yeah, probably. Okay, well, with this, we reached the end about this um, tutorials and articles report of, of uh, October. Next month, we have uh, yet another bunch of interesting articles being published this month. Uh, and I promise there will be less about business and more about technical things. <laughs> I know that uh, like only a minority of people are interested in businesses. Uh, that's not true. So um, I hope that the others about business are still also useful. Who knows? May create your own application. Okay. So on my behalf, it is all for now. Bye. Bye.